you like my videos and want to support me on Patreon, be sure and check my link below. Every dollar helps and I really appreciate it. Also, be sure to like, share, subscribe, and hit that notification bell to be reminded whenever I upload new videos. Light gun video attractions have been around since the 1930s. They didn't become mainstream until a little company by the name of Exidy decided to revolutionize the genre and created another golden age arcade classic by the name of Crossbow. What was the original plan for this arcade game? So let's get medieval as we discuss the history of Crossbow. The year is 1983 and Exidy programmer Nick Illion is thinking outside the box when it comes to his next game. In early 1982, the higher-ups of the company were discussing using Laserdisc technology, but they passed at the very last minute. They decided to use more RAM and better graphic capabilities instead of laser technology, and looking back on it now, they made the right decision. Mr. Illion was interested in doing a light gun game, but couldn't decide on what the theme should be. Initially, he went with an end-of-the-world scenario, but then changed his mind when he saw a certain Saturday morning cartoon. The cartoon in question? Dungeons and Dragons. He loved the whole team aspect and wanted to incorporate something similar into his game. Due to it being set in the medieval times, he realized a standard gun couldn't be used. He decided to go with a crossbow. The crossbow was designed by Barnett Crossbows of England. The sound is something else that most people will remember if they've ever played this game. This was the very first game in existence to feature fully digitized and sampled sound by Ken Nicholson. Over 100 unique sounds were provided and it really adds to the overall atmosphere of this game. The object of Crossbow was to protect a party of various characters as they tried to retrieve stolen treasures from the castle of the evil Master of Darkness. The game begins with a map where players can choose one of several possible directions to travel by shooting one of the two or three colored blocks along the bottom of the screen. Each pad leads to a different type of zone. After a selection is made, the game switches to a side view of the selected zone with the friends attempting to walk across the screen from left to right at a continuous pace. Each zone will have a variety of dangers. Players need to shoot any hazards to keep their friends safe as they journey from one side to the other. Once all of the friends have completed crossing the screen, players will be brought back to the map and once again need to choose a direction of travel. Players need to find a path to eventually reach the castle hall where the evil master is located. On occasion, you'll be awarded bonus friends after each level. The levels you and your party have to traverse are the desert, haunted village, Volcano, Ice Caverns, River, The Jungle, The Castle, and finally the final zone in the game is the Castle Hall. If you and your party are successful at defeating the evil Master of Darkness, you are awarded 250,000 points while the game restarts at higher difficulty. As I mentioned, this game was the first in arcade history to feature fully digitized and sampled sound. Sound designer Ken Nicholson did some really innovative and creative things when designing this game. For example, he talked into a metal trash can when designing the voice for the evil Lord of Darkness. Also, to create the sounds of the skeletons dying, he went to a bowling alley and recorded a person getting a strike. Each character on screen has his own unique sound. Sit back and take a listen. The game was converted to a number of home systems with absolute entertainment during the Commodore 64 and MS-DOS versions. Atari handled the 2600, 7800, and the Atari 8-bit line of computers. Let's get this rockin' medieval party started with the rather excellent Atari 2600 version. What an achievement on the primitive Atari 2600 
especially considering this game came out a full 12 years after the system debuted. Now obviously there is no light gun support, so you control a little white dot shooting everything on screen. Graphics are really well done and so is the sound. The speed of the cursor could have been better, but I guess they didn't want to make it too easy. Next up is the Commodore 64 version. Let me just say up front that the Commodore and MS-DOS versions do not support any sort of light gun, so you have to use a joystick or a mouse instead. The Commodore version is really well done with colors matching pretty close to the arcade game. Although the sprites are a bit chunky, everything from the arcade game is here. Gameplay is nice and smooth with a fast responsive cursor. Although all of the voices have been stripped out, the music is very good. The Apple II version is up next. The colors are nice and vibrant and the backgrounds closely match the arcade game. The problem is with the sprites. Although the gameplay is fast and smooth, the sprites look like something out of the Rocky Horror Picture Show. If you can get past that though, this is a pretty good conversion. The MS-DOS version is up next and it's a very good conversion. Although the graphics are only EGA, they are still very close to the arcade game. The sprites are nice and large and the animation is nice and smooth. You control this version with the mouse, so that will help the game as far as difficulty goes. The sound effects use only the internal PC speaker, so be sure and disable those unless you want your ears to start bleeding. Oh, up next is the Atari 7800 version. This one allows the use of a light gun, which really helps as far as getting the arcade experience at home. The graphics are pretty good, but again a bit on the chunky side just like the Commodore 64. The gameplay is nice and fast and everything moves nice and smooth. In my opinion, this is the best version just for the simple fact you can use a light gun. Enough said. And finally, we have Crossbow for the Atari 8-bit line of computers. As far as the home computer versions go, this is the best one. The graphics have been overhauled and look really good. The speed of the gameplay feels nice and tight. The audio is really well done, especially when compared to the 7800 version. Sprites are nice and large and look very similar to the arcade game. You can also use a light gun, which greatly enhances the playability. In 2010, Crossbow was released for the iOS platform. Developed by Mean Hamster Software, this was a very good representation of the actual arcade game minus the crossbow. Since you're using the iOS platform, you basically have to tap on the screen at whatever you're shooting at. All in all though, it's a good conversion. And that about does it for the history of Crossbow. This is another one of those arcade games that playing it on MAME just doesn't do it justice. You have to feel that crossbow in your fingertips while you're taking out all the enemies to get the full experience. It's a pretty rare cabinet, so if you happen to come across it and have never tried it before, be sure to give it a shot. If you like my videos and want to support me on Patreon, be sure and check my link below. Every dollar helps and I really appreciate it. Also, be sure to like, share, subscribe, and hit that notification bell to be reminded whenever I upload new videos. Thanks for watching.